During this video, you are probably going to hear thunder, you're going to hear rain, you're going to hear all kinds of things going on. But I want you to know what you're hearing is an absolute answer to prayer. I've been praying for weeks for rain, and it's coming, and I praise God. But I have a question I want to ask you today, so stay tuned. On Sunday afternoon, August the 9th, which happened to be my 62nd anniversary, I was walking around my house and thinking, and a question just came to me, my mind and kept repeating itself over and over. And the question was, who am I? And as I would think, I would hear it again, who am I? And it became almost a desperate question, who am I, to the point that I was saying it out loud to myself, who am I? Just a continual question going on and on. And that night when I went to sleep, I started having some dreams. It was the same dream that was over and over several times with a couple of my friends in the dream with me. And the dream was I would hear God say in a quiet voice, I know who you say I am. And then in a thundering voice, but who do you say you are? And I would wake up and think about it and shake my head like and go back to sleep only to dream it again. And this happened three or four times during the night. And needless to say, since that time, which was a week and a half ago, I have heard that question every day. Who do you say you are? And the interesting thing is I've heard other people saying it. I've heard other people even saying, who am I? And I've even read it on Facebook in this last week and a half. Who do you say you are? One of the amazing things about it is I'm always, it's always very easy for me to talk to you and to tell you who Jesus is. Jesus Christ is my Lord. Jesus Christ is my Savior. Jesus Christ is my Redeemer and my righteousness, my healer, my provider, my all in all, my protector, my comforter, the lily in the valley, the rose of Sharon, my soon coming King, and my English language doesn't have enough words to say who Jesus is. But when we come to Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, we become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away and all things become new and we have a new identity in Him. And we have to ask ourselves anew, but who do I say I am with this new identity in the Lord Jesus Christ? It's a new day. It's a new identity. Old things have passed away and all things are new. So I have to understand who I am with my new identity. And so do you. Because of him, my word should be, I know who I am. I am redeemed. Jesus redeemed me on the cross of Calvary. He paid, purchased me and he paid an exorbitant price for my well-being and for my salvation with his sacrifice. I am the saved one. I believed in my heart and I've confessed with my mouth, not my sins. Coming to Jesus Christ does not say confess your sins. Coming to Jesus Christ says, I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. And that I have done. That's Romans 10, 9. I am the righteousness of Christ 
of I'm the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.21 I am a new creation. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 I am the healed one. By his stripes I am healed, and by his stripes I was healed. Isaiah 53, 5, and 1 Peter 2, 24. I am the provided for one. All my needs are met according to the riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 19. If you will notice, it doesn't say all my needs are met according to my needs. It says all my needs are met according to the riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 23, 1. I am the protected one. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for he is with me. Psalm 23, 4. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 91, 1. I am the comforted one, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. John 14, 16. And God the Father answered that prayer, and that comforter has come, and I have that comforter with me. I'm a child of God. I love the progression. The progression is from servant to friend to child to heir of God. I'm an heir of God. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master does. But I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my father I have made known to you. John 15:15. 15, 15. For you are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3:26. So we've gone from servants to children now, from servants to friends to children. And the next verse, and if children then heirs. What an awesome awesome thing heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Romans 8, 17 through 19. As you and I know, when we speak who we are in this new identity in the Lord Jesus Christ, there may be those that are going to think that we are egotistical and arrogant. And they may look at us and say, who in the world do you think you are? And my answer to them is, well, if you have several hours, let me tell you who I am. As I shared this with someone the other day, they said proud people and inferior people are insecure. When we don't know who we are, there is an insecurity because we don't know who we are. We don't know where we belong. We don't know what we're supposed to be doing. But being secure and knowing who we are in the Lord Jesus Christ puts us on top of the world, basically. When we do not know who we are in Christ Jesus, we tend to puff ourselves up and pretend to be somebody we're not. Or we're absolutely insecure because we don't have any sense at all of our well-being. Many are, dis are concerned about declaring who they are in Christ because Paul wrote to the Romans, <clears throat> For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. The first part of the third verse of Romans 12. I find out, however, that most people, if they do think more of themselves than they ought, 
It is what they think of themselves in themselves apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. A long time ago, I came to the realization and the conclusion that I can do no thing without Jesus Christ. And anything I do that is of any value in life whatsoever, I give all praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Along with this came the thought, though, as I was thinking about that verse, if I deny who I am in and through the Lord Jesus Christ, I am denying him in all the things that he purchased for me and that he did for me on the cross of Calvary that day. This is why today I can say wholeheartedly with all my heart, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am a woman of God with the word of the Lord in my mouth. He speaks, I hear, I do. Just think of all he has made us to be in our new identity in him. And I took this list from someone on Facebook the other day, and I forgot who, but it says, says it very well for me. I am courageous. I am determined. I am unstoppable. I am victorious. I am loved. I am gifted. I am anointed. I am blessed. I am successful. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I am healed. I am beautiful. I am whole. I am confident. I am forgiving. I am grateful. I am generous. I am strong. I am well able. I am favored. I am God's masterpiece. And I can say all that and even more about myself because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done and what he has accomplished. On that day on that cross, he made a divine exchange with me. He basically wrapped himself in my cloak of sin and shame and sickness and disease and all the other horrible things about myself. He took that on himself on the cross. He didn't just pay for our salvation and, and for us to be brought back into the family of God. He didn't just pay for that with, with how seriously his body was beaten to a pulp. But he paid for that even with the sickness and disease on him and the sin of the whole world. He took all the sin on him. There's no way that we could ever describe or even understand what Jesus did and what he took upon himself. And after he got through paying that horrific price, he invited me in and he gave me the free will to accept him or to deny him. He did not make us robots. He gave us free choice. We can invite Jesus Christ into our life or we can walk away to our detriment for eternity. It isn't just for tomorrow, it's for eternity. But one day, when I was a little girl, I chose to accept him as my Lord and Savior. And he wrapped me in his robe of righteousness. And he said, child, you are now home, praise God. Perhaps even today, you have been questioning who you are. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, your identity is at best struggling. You may say you're a son or a daughter or a mother or a father or an accountant, a teacher, uh, whatever your occupation may be. But if you aren't able to say, I am his and he is mine, and you're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, you have an issue. I invite you today to receive this Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, into your life. 
that you might be able to say all these wonderful things about who you are. You are seated him with him in heavenly places, Ephesians tells us. That when Jesus died, he went and he sat at the right hand of God the Father. And today we are seated with him in heavenly places. And praise God, we can then speak. There's nothing higher than that, than being in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can speak over ourselves that way. May I pray with you today? Father, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I believe in my heart, Father, that you raised him from the dead. I now receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you pray that with conviction and with all your heart, welcome to the family. You're now a child of God. You're now a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You are now my brother and sister or sister wherever you are, whoever you are. And whether you have just received the Lord as your Savior, or whether you've been serving the Lord for many years, I challenge you that you start declaring who you are in Jesus Christ with your new identity. Look up the scriptures, take them for yourselves, and put them in your heart and speak them out. Don't just think them, speak them out. In your darkest days, you speak that out. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. I'm the child of God. There is nothing that can beset me today because the Lord is with me. I have the almighty God at my side. And as you speak that out, those thoughts and those doubts and those disillusionments and all of those things have to flee because you're speaking the word of God and you're speaking who you are in your new identity in the Lord Jesus Christ. Until next time. <laughs>